start with the obvious. You're in the UK, finally. You're over here. It feels like the following has kind of been building online for a long time. I know you've been back and forth a little bit, but this is this has got to be really nice to be here doing these headline shows. I'm sure you've been excited for for a long time, right? Oh, I mean, it's we'll tell anyone that will listen. It's been so surreal. It's been amazing. I mean, even talking with you, like I I grew up, not grew up, but like I've been watching your videos for. I hope you didn't grow up. That makes me feel so old. If you grew up, sorry, I immediately wanted to. Immediately (laughs) was like, jump ship, jump ship. Don't call him old. Don't call him old. Um, No, but I've been watching your videos uh, since I was a teenager. Since I dreamed of being in bands myself. So we're we're having you know kind of like it's been it's been huge. It's really like every single day is is a new first and a new and a new just surreal joyous experience of life. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. And I feel like with the UK in particular, you know, there's, I mean, I've, I've spoken to it with some of your kind of contemporaries before. There's a bit of a scene building out where you guys are from. I see it with like yourselves. I see it with Honey Revenge, Arrows in Action, the home team, Scene Queen, all those kind of artists that are kind of together out there in LA right now. It's cool. It's infusing bits of pop rock into pop punk, into all these kind of different areas. And yeah. I feel like as much as it's getting appreciated where you guys are from, I can see how much the UK audience really goes for that sound and really goes for that vibe too, right? I would say even more so. I mean, to this day, our biggest show is still in London. Uh, Yesterday we played Electric Ballroom. That's 1,400. um, And then we played Islington uh, in January, and I think that was 1,000 or 1,100. So it's like our biggest show in the States is 1,000 cap. Like... (laughs) So we're we're definitely feeling the love out here. Like, I need to move. Clearly, I, I'm in the wrong. We're in the wrong hemisphere, or not wrong, right? Correct hemisphere, wrong continent. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. We'll get you over the Atlantic more. It's going to work yeah, out yeah, nicely, yeah. dude. Um, well, what a good time to kind of be over here touring as well, because obviously Picasso's kind of just dropped, and really lovely reaction to that. And I like that you're again, you're not afraid to kind of play around with the styles you've been known for a little bit as well. This is kind of the danciest I feel like you guys have got. There's, there's certainly some of that kind of different rhythms, different kind of influences in the back there. Tell me a little bit about putting together this one. You know, this one really was, I kind of just threw it together and it was almost a happy accident. Um, my mom worked in in museums like when I was growing up. So I definitely was around a lot of like fine art and things like that. But like, I am not an art history buff by any means. I don't know. Like I had to ask my mom, like, hey, does Monet have any green things for this pun? And she was like, he painted the green gardens. And I was like, OK, cool. That works for me. Works for me. Because the pun is, you know, blue uh, like Picasso because uh, he's depressed and then green like Monet. But it's like money because like green with envy and money. I thought it was really witty, but I didn't know if it actually worked. Um, Sorry, the question was, how does it feel <laughs> to be releasing the song while we're out here? It's perfect timing. It's amazing. People know the words already, which is out of out of this world. That's nice. It feels built for live as well. Like that's one that's going to get the people moving, and it's, it brings a little, you know, if you mind the pun again, but a, a bit of a different color to your set. Do you know what I mean? That feels like a nice Absolutely. new little little moment that you can throw in there, right? It's got to be immediately going down pretty well live, I guess. Yeah. Oh it's, yeah. It's really fun to play live too. You know, get a little dancey on stage and just vibe out with the audience. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Well, it's been building for a minute because obviously we've had a couple of the other singles that I do want to mention as well. I mean, uh, I hope I'm not sick and drag me down. I mean, these the, it, it, again, it's showing off different elements. I feel like it's nice that you're able to, at the one minute, delve into the, almost a heavier edge to what you guys do. And then, like we say, do something really, really poppy like you've just done as well. You know, yeah, it, it must be kind of quite a big mix of influences you guys have, right? I mean, talk to me about who you've kind of been channeling and what the aims have been, I suppose, just putting together some kind of more recent music like this. Oh, I mean, I I grew up on like, you know, all the pop punk of the aughts and kind of like the 2000s, like the 2010s era of all the all the bands you would think um, that I would be into. I was into um, and then kind of like what what really spiraled it is I also listened to a lot of musical theater. So or I did. I did a lot of musical theater when I was a kid. So. <laughs> A lot of our melodies, a lot of our harmonies are built around kind of the same structure that you would write like a like a show tune to. And so like it's kind of a, like Picasso is kind of the dance number. And so we have, you know, on this record specifically, we're trying to, you know, not be one note, not just be here's Loveless One with, you know, 11 sad songs. Um, and we're trying to have like 
if they're sad, at least the the juxtaposition of the the lyrics with the the instrumental is something that feels fresh. It doesn't feel like rehashed. Yeah, for sure. Let's sit in that musical theater moment for just a minute, because as a as a, as a recovering musical theater nerd myself, like we need to get into this a little bit here because yeah, that, had, that had not occurred to me until you just mentioned it. But yeah, there's clearly a little bit of a through line. And that's something that I've always really loved, actually, about any kind of i mean do we want to call it emo anymore but you know what i mean like that sort of the totally. sort of genre we're talking about the scene we're talking about here fallout boy got a little of that panic had a little bit of that mcr had a little bit of that at times you know it's it's there's a theatricality to it because i don't know there's there's just something about the the sparkle of that type of performance style that i think lends itself really naturally to the scene and this kind of thing right yeah i think <clears throat> emo is theatrical you know, like it's, it's, it's emotion that, that is, uh, you know, it's, it, it started from like emotional hardcore, right? That's, that's basically yeah. where the origin of the name is. So yeah, it makes sense to me. I think all of my favorite bands are very theatrical. Um, and a lot of like, you know, I think of like 30 seconds to Mars or my chem or like who else even like, uh, I mean, even like all American rejects, all American rejects like yeah. have like a ton of like very theatrical videos. Um, so I just think, yeah, that's that's the fun stuff, you know, like you can every band can like do the performance video and, and stuff like that. But like there's like there's something about like really like acting and like being like a being kind of a, a dork about it. That's that's really fun and really cathartic. And like especially on stage. Yeah, is sure. we, we just get to like we, we act a fool, you know, yeah. we're just running up and down. We're I'm singing to the ground. There's nobody in the ground to listen to the show. That like the fans know it's ridiculous. But it's fun to bring those elements into because we see it in the music videos as well a little bit too. But also yeah. like it's just another aspect to the connection thing. And it's no secret. I mean, you guys have talked about this before, but you know, TikTok really, really helped in terms of building your audience, right? And that to yeah. me has always been when it's at its best, it's just another avenue for connection, right? If you're using it well. It's just another way that you can reach a new audience and actually show them, hey, you know how you're into that really, really cool specific type of thing? We've got it over here. If you come down this little avenue, this little algorithm, we got something for you over here. I mean, talk to me a little bit about your use of that, because I think I think it's interesting. And what's and what works about it, not just for you guys, but anyone who's kind of made a success of it in that way, is that it has to kind of come from a unique place for you, right? You can't there's yeah. there's not really a game to it, I don't think, in terms of that. I, you know, and I think a lot of it is just dumb luck. I think there are people that are that are smarter and funnier and more talented than me who who don't have the same luck on on TikTok or who just like don't have like the the same success. And and sometimes it just comes down to like finding the right moment, having the right thing take off. Um, it's hard, but it's it's really it's it's fun to kind of to build to build a world where instead of just like I'm I'm you know we we blew up with the covers and with this kind of like you know I tried to make it my own for as long as possible and ironically these new songs they're not going viral like and that's fine with me um because the fans know these words way more than they did on our first tour yeah people knew the words to Picasso before it was out people knew the words to driving down the day it was out and that's just like I wouldn't trade that for the world. I think, you know, TikTok is cool. Like going viral all the time is great. We haven't gone viral in nine months. I haven't gone viral since the end of 2022. And like, sure, we we lost like the superficial crowd, but I think the it's only made the diehards invest more. And it's made us, you know, create stuff that we care about. Because like it, going viral only matters if, if they if you find fans people actually care about you otherwise they're just there for a, a moment and then it's gone yeah it's got to start with you guys like if you guys don't care about it and you're just doing something to go viral it's going to shine through anyway do you know what i mean it's got to come from a place where you're actually enjoying it and then like you say the fans are going to find it through that route because it's just another route where they can find you at the end of the day yeah yeah uh, you know you look at like bands like bad omens that you know or even us for uh, like bad omens basically was is us but five years ahead of us you know so they had they had their viral moment but they had five years of material for people to go back on and be like wow you know i remember bad omens 
I remember the first time I really remember them was the font thing. And now it's like, dude, like, so I don't even remember the other bands in that bill. Like right. Bad Omens is now like going to be, they're on, they're on track to be the biggest rock band in the world. And I think that stems from, they put in the groundwork. And so when, when stuff starts going viral, people could go back and be like, I'm going to check out their other music. And like, oh, this is also really good. Yeah. So that happened with us with the covers, you know, people would find the covers. They weren't on Spotify, but our album was on Spotify. So people yeah. were like, well, let me, let me check this out. And they're like, oh, I actually like that. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, it's a good way. It's a good way to easily kind of discover you guys and keep it moving forward. And another way of doing that as well, of course, is features. And I think you, you picked some kind of, smart ones to be a part of recently i want to mention hot milk obviously that album's kind of just came out recently and you know i was speaking to jim and han about it i think han in particular is always quite wary of features i think she'd be the first to admit that but i think she when it fits it fits and i think yeah. particularly with your voice julian it kind of made sense on that track for them which is why it is a good fit in that way tell me a little bit about working with them and jumping on that track I mean, I had been bugging we have the same managers so i've been bugging our managers for for months for for almost a year now, I was just like, I want to work with Hot Milk. I love them so much. They're my favorite band. I actually reached out to, at one point, our managers before they were our managers. And I said, hi, my name's Julian Camo. I'm in a band. It's called Loveless. Uh, would would Han or Jim be down to do a feature? Like, like we'd pay this and that. And our managers never even responded. They never saw the email. Um Ironically, uh, I, I told them about the email when we met for the first time or the second time, I guess. And they were like, oh, yeah, we see that email now. Sorry, we don't monitor that email address anymore. I, I love Hot Milk so much. They're like one of my favorite bands. Discovered them through the pandemic and just like it was a daily listen for me. It still is. Uh, so when when they said, hey, do you want to jump on this track? I was like, yes. They were like, Do you want to hear it first? I was like, nope. Don't need that. Don't need to hear it. I'm sure it's great. And it was. Yeah. Like I say, a very, very natural fit vocally. I think it absolutely lended itself very, very well to that record. And then another one we've got to mention, I caught up with Telly recently, all about the word alive. And yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I've no doubt in my mind, just even talking about, you know, your, your, you know, fandom in the scene and all this stuff, that must have been a hell of a phone call to get that one, right? I mean, talk to me about, about getting involved with someone who I'm sure you grew up listening to again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no. And it's, it's so funny because like, Telly and I were kind of just like, I forget how we became friends, but like, we just like all, all of a sudden were friendly. And and I remember just being like, this is weird. It must have happened through Kellen, which is another weird one. Like when that happened, I was like, what the heck? Oh. <laughs> so I think, yeah, like one day Telly was just like, hey, buddy, like, want to sing a song? And I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, And we hung out, we went out to dinner. He's like, here's here's our plan. Here's the song. Here's kind of the 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 vibe. And I was like, oh, dude, one hundred percent. Like, I see it. I like they're they're they've been at this for whatever 10, 15 years and still at the top of their game. Telly is like the the happiest and the healthiest he's ever been. It's like it's great to see like that band doing well and and doing like consistently outdoing where they have been is really really special to be a part of that at all. One of their best records, I gotta say. Definitely one of their oh, best records. Yeah, I, think, like, so. I, I really liked the last one, but like this one kind of, I was like, oh, yeah, you, you, you outdid yourselves a lot, boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They went up a gear on this one. No, no, it's yeah. a testament to their hard work. They did really well. And it leads on very, very nicely to kind of your own stuff, guys. Obviously, we had a few standalone singles. Do we feel like we're building towards some kind of larger body of work here? I don't know how much you're allowed to tell me or want to tell me, but I presume there's more songs in the locker. How much are we playing with? What are we kind of thinking? Nothing at all. <laughs> there will be no new music coming in six to eight weeks, every six <laughs> to eight weeks until the album comes out in some amount of days or months or years. Nice. <laughs> nice very good very subtle that's what we like um are we kind of are we ready to go with that music that may or may not be coming or is it still kind of getting worked on like realistically what kind of stage are you actually at in terms of building what might be coming next mixing and mastering oh great fantastic yeah. man we've, no that's really exciting we've recorded things we're, we're working on maybe 
I can't say anything. Yeah, we can't say anything. About it. <laughs> we're working on maybe a feature that I think would be really cool, like a surprising, but a really like yeah. it makes it makes sense. Like mm. people will be excited if that happens. Right. <laughs> this is a wooden table. Yeah. But if uh, that happens. Yeah. Damn. But yeah, th- things have been recorded. Things have been recorded. It's a really good album. It's different. It's like going back to what you said about the colors and and kind of the the textures and the and the we really wanted to make this one kind of have its own identity and feel not just like here here's loveless like 1.5 one part two yeah yeah like well love was one part two yeah. yeah it's it's loveless too and it's i hope you know it it feels like a like an actual an actual an actual advancement sorry we keep getting notifications this is not a lot <laughs>